Hey kids, welcome to one of our most important units of the year, how government works. Why is it so important, you ask? Good question. Well, mostly because you are citizens in this country and the government is made up of its citizens. So as a citizen, you have a voice and you need to learn how to use it. So we're gonna talk about how our constitution was created and how our government is organized into three branches. I know, sounds like a crazy trick. So we got some great questions for this unit. Listen up, here they are. What were the Articles of Confederation and why did they fail? That sounds depressing. What problems did our founding fathers have when they were creating the Constitution? I'm gonna go with bad food and smelly feet. Put your shoes on! Dang! The legislative branch. What does it do? I got this one. They legislate. Ah. What about the executive branch? What do they do? Do you think they execute things? What about the judicial branch? They must do something. Oh, I know. They do judo. Hiya! Wow, amazing questions. I cannot wait to see all five videos in this unit. I know you're going to be right there with me watching all along. We're going to start today with the Articles Confederation. So, put on your space suit. Don't forget your helmet and hold on tight. We're counting down to a launching of learning. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go! We're going! We're going! We're going! Okay, essential question. What were the Articles of Confederation and why did they fail? That is a great question. First of all, think of the Articles of Confederation adopted in March of 1781 as the first draft of the Constitution. This was just a few years before the end of the war, and like any first draft, it was full of plot holes, misspellings, and main characters with major flaws. The Articles of Confederation set up a legislature, otherwise known as a lawmaking body, to make laws for the country where each state had one vote and all bills, or proposed laws, had to be agreed to by three-fourths of the states to become law. Making amendments, or changes to the actual Articles of Confederation, required unanimous consent. In other words, every delegate from every state had to agree before any changes could be made to the Articles themselves. Trivia fact, did you know that some people claim that Benjamin Franklin was the first president of the United States because he was the first person to serve as leader of the legislature set up under the Articles of Confederation. This is a bogus claim, however, because the leader of the legislature had no special powers and was never called a president. In reality, the Articles of Confederation did not create a president or any other central person of power. Why? Let's find out. Well, imagine you are near the end of the Revolutionary War against Britain and you suddenly think, dang, what if we win this thing? You figure that at some point you need to have some form of leadership and organization to your country. Remember the join or die flag? Well, the idea of the flag was that states needed to work together to defeat the king. At the same time, the flag shows the individuality of the different states and the fact that each state was unique and had its own laws and traditions. Now, you have to remember that you are in a war where large numbers of people are risking and even giving their lives to escape the rule of a king. But they are not fighting to escape one king and replace it with another. They are fighting for a whole new idea. The idea that was put forth by the Declaration of Independence. That all men are created equal and that the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness come from God, not from kings. So what you might want to do in this situation is create a government that encourages the states to work together but does not tell them what to do. Think of it this way. Here's a monarchy. Notice the power lies with a king who tells everyone else what to do. Here is a confederation. Notice power is spread out, and there is no single leader, nor is there a large amount of power in the hands of a few people. You see, the Articles of Confederation are the exact opposite of a monarchy, since that was the last thing people wanted in their country. I'm sure when the Articles of Confederation were created, they all believed that they had created a wonderful government that protected the state's freedoms and brought the states together. But in reality, they created a system where little got done and states acted selfishly. 
and more like individual countries than parts of the same nation. The lack of power in the government caused several problems for the U.S. during the eight years of the Articles Confederation. Remember how they didn't want anyone who might act or even look like a king when they created the Articles? Well, one of the things that the president does is enforce the rules. Under the Articles of Confederation, there was no one in charge of making sure the states followed the rules that they themselves agreed to. The states just thought, of course they would follow the rules. They all agreed to them. There were times, however, when following the rules would cost states money and or power. Most of the time when this happened, states would simply break the rules. Well, if no one's going to enforce the rules, why follow them? Sometimes states disagreed about things. For example, many states could not agree where their border was. Now, if you had a disagreement with a brother or sister or another student at school, you would go to a parent or a teacher to try and resolve the conflict. What if, however, there is no parent or teacher? When the Articles of Confederation created no system of courts and judges, there is no one to go to to settle disputes. This means that the states would just argue and never have any way of solving the problem. The lack of power for the government under the Articles also made it impossible to collect taxes. When going to the states for money to run the government, they could only ask, not tell the states to pay them. Most states chose not to pay, or paid a small amount. Now, the government's job was to print money for states to use. However, if you print money and don't get taxes from the states to back it up, the money becomes worthless. This is exactly what happened. Since the money was worthless, states began printing their own money, which, as you can imagine, led to a great deal of confusion when trading between the states. Can you imagine having Oregon money and California money and Idaho money? And I think you get the picture. Remember I said earlier it took three-fourths of the states to agree to new laws and 100% of states had to agree to make changes to the Articles? Well, you can imagine that was very difficult to do. Because of this, little was accomplished. And even though people saw the problems with the Articles, they were impossible to change because of needing 100% of votes to do so. This means that the problems continued longer than they should have because they could not easily be fixed. In fact, it seemed impossible. Obviously, we don't have the Articles of Confederation today, so how did they get changed? Well, as I said, the Articles of Confederation needed changing, and the fact that they weren't was leading to major problems across the country. One of the problems was an economic recession. The currency problem and lack of cooperation between the states led to lower prices being paid for food and crops being grown by farmers. Daniel Shaves was a farmer who was being paid so little for his crops, he couldn't pay his bills. Banks were sending out the sheriff to farms who didn't pay their bills to take the farms away. Daniel Shaves was determined not to lose his farm, so instead of giving it up, he decided to fight. He organized a group of angry farmers who first broke out other indebted farmers and then attempted to take over the capital of Massachusetts. The rebels were eventually confronted with an organized militia, which put the rebellion to an end. However, the anger that caused the rebellion didn't go away. Many people became scared that a small group of farmers could do so much damage. What would America do if the British returned to fight, or another country for that matter? Would they be able to work together, or would each state have to fight for itself? These fears caused a meeting to be called on May 5th of 1787 to make changes to the Articles Confederation and fix the nation's problems. In our next video, we'll talk about how a few changes will turn into a whole new government. So what? Well, if you can answer the following questions, then you learn, learn, learn what you need to know. What were the Articles Confederation and what ideas affected how they were created? Identify the major problems with the Articles of Confederation and rank them in order from what you think was the biggest problem to what you think was the smallest problem. What was the importance of what Daniel Shays did in the formation of our new government? Tune in next time to find out how our funny fathers were really some of the best problem solvers in American history.